Whilst the original idea for this third video on the uh, a CRT microprocessor device to simply give an overview of a basic pong game to bounce a, a ball and use a bat. Um, I realised that in fact it's it's uh, quite it's quite complicated and therefore it seemed better to split it into two halves. Um, when I originally started doing the the bouncing around on the screen idea, I realised there were several ways of doing it and some were much more complicated and unnecessarily complicated than others. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the simple single line bounce on the screen showing what I did to do it. This is not necessarily the way that anybody else would do it. And then we'll actually show the ball bouncing around on the screen. And lastly, we'll show putting a stationary uh, dot, which will eventually be expanded to several dots to make a paddle. Um, so let's make a start by having a quick look at the um, flow chart here. Here we have the single line bounce flow chart. Now remember that this is actually uh, machine code which we're using here. Obviously you can use whatever code you want. Um, very simple. This is simply to allow us to bounce a spot from one side of the screen to the other and back again. Um, many, many ways of doing that. This is the way I chose to do it and then I virtually doubled up on this to do the, the one with the whole screen bounce all the way around the screen. Um, the delay mentioned here, you have to calculate how many bits you have uh, across the screen, then work out how long you take, want it to take across the screen, and then work out what the delay would be according to that for the delay, and obviously delays between every spot when you when you move it. Um, very simple. I mean, what I've done here, I'm I mean, you do things your own way. Um, using a Z80, there are loads and loads of registers in it, and sometimes it's a little bit easier just to swap things between registers rather than. Um, put them on a memory location and pull them out and increment them, you know, then put them back and this sort of stuff. So I use registers quite a lot with the Z80. Um, the delay, I just use the B and C because rather than putting it in memory. Um, and all this is here is just um, load with a value in D. So I use the D register just for the uh, for the pulse going backwards and forwards. Output it to the X plates, increment D, jump and not zero, go back to the delay. Um, and so on. And if it is zero, then we know we've reached the far right hand side. So that's obviously jumped down to a uh, zero. So we want to put FF again to take it to the far right hand side. Load from the D into the A, output it again, decrement D, jump of zero. And if it's zero, we w we've obviously reached the, the bottom, sorry, the far, the far left. And we'll jump back and we'll start all over again. There we go, that's about it. It doesn't do any more exciting than that. So that is the program we're talking about. That's simply counting up on one register. When it reaches the end, you come back again. Um, so that's the basis for the single line bounce. Um, it's about right for the speed it's taking. So we use this subroutine in the full version of the bounce all around the screen. But um, obviously one has to adjust for it depending on how fast you want the game ultimately to be, etc, etc. So let's move on to the next bit. Right, I won't dwell on this too long, but uh, this is the basic bounce screen to have the ball bouncing around. And this was our single line bounce. You can see it's quite a bit more complicated. A couple of points, quick pointers here. Um, the way I've actually used for this is we've used separate halves here, one for the X and one for the Y. And I found the best thing to do is to keep the two completely separate from each other because then they, they sort themselves out. Um, we're using the B and C um, registers in the Z80 for the timing, the delay that is. Um, once again, you don't have to, you could use it as a memory location, it doesn't matter at all. Um, I have used the memory location here which is 4000 and one of the key points to make this work is you have to have a direction bit and that's one of the ones stored in, that's zero and one stored in memory location 4000. So we're actually going and pulling that out and we're changing that bit depending whether the spot's going up, down, side to side. Um, and your Y is still the D register, sorry, the X is the D register and the Y is the E register. And, and that's about it. I so say the delay is slightly, slightly different. I've made it so we can vary it just so that, so that um, you know, it, you can have different speeds if ultimately with the game. Um, so the actual order in which we work this is first of all, once you set the stack up, etc, etc, and we've loaded in the initial um, X and Y, X going to the left, Y going upwards, we put the set the two bits, north and one, in 4000 and save those. So the first bit is the delay. 
Um, this is what we do. That's the delay. The next bit we do is the X position, which is this bit. And then the, the next bit is the green, which is the Y position. If once one has finished those, because it goes from here to here, then here, then back to here again, that will that'll bounce a, uh, a dot around the screen. Now, the thing to remember is obviously there's more to a game than just having a dot going around the screen. So you need obviously a paddle at the end. Now, this is a we'll quickly cover this right at the end of this this video. Um, but one has to remember when you have just a spot moving around on the screen, you can't just put something else there without upsetting the spot. So the way to do it is actually you need a second delay. So you stop here at the green. You then go off and do whatever you want to create your paddle bits, and then you go back to the original, this, this original one, and you put a delay in. So in other words, these delays, you have to work them in with each other. So if this is, and you know, if we say X, you want, if you have two in there, you want X divided by two, otherwise the delay will be altered. So every time you add an extra spot, you have to actually work out and divide that delay so that the spot has time to move and register. The point is if you don't do this, if you turn all the lights off, you can just about see where the spot would have been, but it never it's never on long enough to actually see it on the screen as such. So there we have it. That is that program and you can see all it's doing is the spot is moving around on the screen, obviously using the X and Y we can move it around and then forget where it was. But at the moment there's obviously no paddle or anything else, so remembering the points I made, in order to make a paddle appear, in this case for this, I'll show you in a second, is just a single dot, and we'll have a single stationary dot. But unless you divide up the the delays we're using, you'll find that you're sharing the time between the two, the, either the moving spot and the still spot. So I'll put that prom in now, a different EPROM, and you'll see what it's like with the spot on it. Here we have the version 3 of this program, and we have a spot that likes drifting around this. The whole thing seems to drift around on this one. There's a component here, a little bit flaky, I think, maybe one of the valves. I'll just have to, have to play with that and find out what it is. But anyway, we can see we're now hitting the four sides, and this is where the, the paddle will be. But obviously there's just one spot instead of a multiple spot paddle. But so they're the same intensity, and that's because we're using the same delay. And you note that it is actually running at half the speed as it was. That's because the, I've simply put in another delay of exactly the same amount as for this. So therefore we have to have the same amount of delay with that spot being visible and that spot being visible. So when I put the two more on, it will obviously have to have... Um, more delays will have to split it up so there'll be three times the delay there and one there so each spot will be visible at the same intensity. Um, what I'll do now is I'll, to finish off, I'll close the lights down completely, zoom in on the screen and see if we can actually see the trace which is going on in the background between the spot jumping between these parts here. Okay, so I think we can quite clearly see the a trace between where the spot is going uh, and obviously when if we add another two on the end here then um, for the paddle I'll probably try it with three and see what happens. Yeah, I'll turn the brightness right up that's why it's it's sort of all blurry such like that. Anyway the next video which uh, whenever I do it which should be soon hopefully I'll cover the actual game showing the paddle and it moving up and down and meeting up with the ball etc. Um, I will I'll put the flowcharts up after here just in case anybody's looking for a little bit of inspiration um, if they want to try this themselves. Thanks for watching.